Hey guys, in this video I've put together six simple tips to help you get started as a DJ. Now bear in mind, these are entry level tips for people who are thinking about getting into DJing or may have just got their first set of DJ decks. So I really hope you enjoy them and make sure you hang around for tip number six because it's my favorite out of all of them. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Okay guys, so point number one is what DJ decks to get. A lot of people really stress out about which is the perfect DJ deck they should get as a beginner DJ. But the reality is, if you are really gonna take DJing seriously, in a year or two, you're probably just gonna want to upgrade your gear anyway. So when you start off, any kind of entry DJ decks will actually do. You don't have to get anything special, as long as they've got jog wheels, some basic EQ functions here, volume sliders, Q and play button, which they obviously all will have, and a couple of hot Q points, that will honestly easily get you through your first two years of DJing. In fact, any professional DJ could go out there and perform at any gig using entry-level DJ decks just like this. So don't stress out too much about which DJ decks you go for. Okay, so the second thing I want to tell you about is the two Q buttons on your DJ decks. The reason I want to tell you about these is I feel that most of the things on your DJ decks are quite self-explanatory, but the Q button isn't one of them. So there are two Q buttons I want to tell you about. The first one is this one just above play. The function of this is that you can get your track to a certain point of the track and set a Q button here. This means every time you hit that Q button, the track will play from that point. And when you take your finger off it, it will snap back to that same cue point. This, as a DJ, allows you to kind of practice bringing in that track or knowing exactly the point you're gonna bring in that track. For example, you may not wanna bring in the track from the beginning. So now I've set that point there, if I hit the cue button, it will play from that same point every time. The second cue button I wanted to tell you about is this one here with the headphones on. Something that's really important as a DJ is you can practice and listen to the track you're going to be bringing in while your audience are still listening to the track that's currently playing. So in order to do this, you need to turn the volume down completely so your audience can't hear the track that you're practicing with. And you have to hit this secondary cue button here with a little headphone icon on it, which is usually found at the top or around the volume. Now that's been hit, you can now listen to the track through your headphones and your audience can't hear it. So this is perfect for a new DJ who can practice queuing up that second song while this is playing. So by the time they actually cue in the song, they've had a bit of practice. So those are two really important features you need to know about. Okay, so point number three is the first transition you ever need to know about. And the reason why this is an important transition is because in all honesty, if you had to get on the stage now in the next five minutes, this is the one transition I would teach you about. It's called filter and play. And it's really simple. As track A is coming to an end, what you're gonna do is grab the filter knob, which is located just above the volume, and turn it down in order to filter out the song. And while you pinch the filter here, this finger here is gonna push the volume down. So you're gonna filter and turn the volume down. It's gonna sound a little bit like this. Grit. Okay. Now, the next thing you need to know is about just hitting play or the cue button at that exact moment. So you can cue it in, press play, and the next track will go. This is the easiest transition that would actually get you through most DJ gigs if you've never DJed before, filtering out and pressing play at the right time. Let me give you a super quick demonstration now. Grit. Huh. RGM production. So there you go, it's as simple as that. You filter out with these two fingers and you push the volume down with that finger there. That will get you through transitions of any genre, any music, and if you have to jump on the stage quickly now, that's the transition you need to know. Tip number four is that song selection is the single most important thing about DJing. Something that all DJs go through is they go away and learn all this technical stuff on their DJ decks. 
And when they finally go and DJ live, they quickly realize that it's not about the transitions, it's about the music that you are playing. If I was sitting with you now and you had to go and DJ live tonight at a house party or a wedding, I wouldn't be sitting with you sculpting the perfect transitions, I'd be sitting with you sculpting the perfect playlist. As long as you are playing music that people like, you can do really basic transitions like the last example I gave and get away with it. However, if you are doing the most complicated technical stuff on your DJ decks and playing music that nobody likes, the dance floor will be empty. So that is the fundamental, most important thing you need to know about DJing and I wanted to throw it in these top tips. Tip number five is to use effects sparingly. You see, something that so many amateur DJs do wrong is they add too many effects to the songs that they're playing. It's probably because when they're standing behind their DJ decks and a song is playing and they've got three minutes to kill, they feel they need to be doing stuff so it looks like they're DJing. But actually, I have an ethos when it comes to effects. And that is, if you have added so much of an effect to a song that your audience have become aware that you're using effects, they're not actually going to like it. Remember, they just want to dance to the music that they know and love. And if you have put too much of an effect on it to a point where they've realized that that's actually happened, they're going to get annoyed with you as a DJ. So remember, they like the music, let them dance to the music. Don't feel like you have to add effects. And if they become aware of you messing around with the music too much, they will think you are a bad DJ. So use effects sparingly. Tip number six is a really simple and obvious tip that is actually gonna make your life so much easier when it comes to learning more complicated transitions like beat matching on your DJ decks. When you wanna start learning how to beat match, make sure you use house music, which has a steady beat going throughout, that has a really long intro and a really long outro. I always recommend dead mouse tracks because they always have really long intros and really long outros. But here's the tip for you. Use the same track in track A and in track B, because then you'll know that the two tracks are exactly the same speed and exactly the same key, and it will make your life so easy when it comes to learning the basics of beat matching. Now guys, if you've enjoyed this video and you wanna be able to fast track your way to being able to put together insane DJ sets every single time, make sure you go and check out beginnerdjlessons.com, where I've currently got some free training. And if you guys would love to learn how to beat match right now, why not click this video link here? I'm gonna take you through to a video where I'm gonna teach you exactly what you need to do to learn how to beat match. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, subscribe to this channel, like and subscribe. Bye for now.